In today's tutorial, I'll be using Inkscape version 91 to show you how to create a very simple um, vector style book icon similar to what you see here on my screen. And at any given time in this tutorial, you can look down at the left hand side of my screen down here to see which keys and mouse clicks I'm using. So that being said, let's get started. When you first open up Inkscape, come up to view, make sure you have custom selected and we're going to go to zoom and go to zoom one to one and then we'll come up here to this button to open up our align and distribute menu and then we'll come up here to open up the edit objects colors gradients and strokes menu and down here make sure from this drop down you have last selected chosen and once you have that done we're ready to get started so the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle so come over here to the rectangles uh, create rectangles and squares we're going to click on that and let's just click and drag on this screen make a nice rectangle kind of like that sort of in the uh, dimensions that a book would be like the the width and the length just try to eyeball it something someone somewhat like that should be sufficient and then we're going to go to path object to path and we're going to come over here to where it says opacity and let's drop that down in half and we'll come up here to the bezier pen and let's click on that and let's go to the top over here somewhere about in this area and come outside of this rectangle and click and then hold control on the keyboard and drag the line over to here and click again and let go of control and press enter and that's going to create a line similar to that now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the edit paths by nodes button we're going to click on that and we're going to take this line and we're just going to drag it up kind of like that and then we're going to click on this node over here and it should bring up these handles and we can just play with these handles kind of like that you're going to want to want you're going to want this side this side of the line coming up like this and then somewhere in the middle dropping down and then coming up again kind of like that so we want to do something so you can play around with this a little bit until it's nice and smooth and fluid and once you get to that point i'd say right here this looks pretty good we can go back to the arrow, click on that, and we can go to path, and we can turn that stroke into a path. And then while holding shift on the keyboard, click on the rectangle, and let's go to path difference. And then we'll go to path, break apart, and that's gonna break that apart into two different pieces. Now we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything, and then click on just this piece up here, and let's press the delete button to get rid of that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this and then we're going to right click it and go to duplicate and while holding control on the keyboard click and drag this down to about right about there I'd say. You want to make sure that the top of this object is fully on top of this bottom object. You don't want you don't want it sticking out a little bit. You see kind of like this right here? You see that white space in the middle? You don't want that. You want this to be completely in there, kind of like that. And once you get to about there, I'd say that's I'd say that's good. You could hold shift in the keyboard and then click on the other object and we'll go to path difference. And we're gonna end up with a shape kind of like this. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to our fill and stroke menu. Let's click the X button to turn that off. And let's come over here to stroke paint and let's click the blue box right there to turn that on. And let's go to stroke style and make sure we have a, a miter join on that. We want that, we want a square cap as well. As far as the stroke width goes, let's try a f uh, 15, let's see how that looks. Now that's kind of small, I'm gonna try a 20 point stroke. Uh, still kind of small, maybe 35. Okay, that should work. You want you want it to be about that thickness. That's pretty good right there. And then we're going to go to path, stroke to path. And that's going to change that from an outline to an actual path that we can edit and manipulate as you can see here. So, once you've done that, let's right click this and go to duplicate. And let's turn that red and while holding control on the keyboard, click and drag this down to about here. Right about there. 
And then we're going to go to our Create Squares and Rectangles button. We're going to click on that again, and we're going to create a, a rectangle on the inside of this right here. So just go ahead and create that rectangle. And let's come up to Stroke Paint, and let's click the X button to turn that off. We don't need that. In fact, let's turn this blue so we can see what we're doing. And let's go back to the arrow over here. And let's just size this rectangle up so that it's about this size. We don't want it really thick, like all the way to the inside of the page there. We want so, we want a little bit of padding on each side. We want it about this this width right here, maybe a little smaller. Yeah, something like that should work. And then once you have it about that size, about that width, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red object and let's center that up on the vertical axis. And once you've done that, we're going to go to path intersection. And what we're going to do now is we're going to right click this and go to duplicate and while holding control on the keyboard click and drag this duplicated copy down to here and while holding control and while still holding the click button on your mouse down press the space bar and it's going to create a copy and then bring this down here press the space bar again we're holding control and the left click button on the mouse the whole time and it's going to create another copy and this fourth one, we're just going to leave this right down here, and we can let go of everything. So what we'll do now is we're going to we're going to select all four of these lines we just created by holding the Shift key and then clicking on each one of them. And we're going to come down here to where it says Distribute. Hover the mouse over this button that says Make Vertical Gaps Between Objects Equal. We're going to click that once, and it's going to space them all out equally. And then we can go to Path Union. And what we could do next actually is hold shift on the keyboard and then click on the black outline of the page and let's center that up on the horizontal axis. And then after that we can go to path union. So now it is now one unified object kind of like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is let's actually flip this thing around. We can come up here to where it says flip selected object horizontally. Let's click that. We want it facing this way. And then come up to our, uh, you see like this little uh, guide up here with the measurements? Bring the cursor up into there and just click and drag and it's going to pull a guide out. You see this red line right here? That's called the guide. We're going to bring this guide down to about here, down to about the bottom of the page, the bottom of our graphic right here. And then we're going to go to the Bezier pen and we're going to snap the cursor onto that line right about where the left edge of this graphic is right here. And we're going to click once and we're going to take the cursor and we're going to bring that line up to about here. We're going to go diagonally across like this right to about here and then click and then hold control on the keyboard and let's drag this straight across to the right edge of the page. It doesn't have to be exactly on the right edge of the page, just somewhere within that proximity. Bring it there and then click and while still holding control bring this line straight down to the guide until it snaps onto the guide and then click again and then you can let go of control and just connect the line back to the starting point. And we're going to have an object. It's going to create an object like this. Now let's press F1 on the keyboard to get back to the arrow or you could just come up here to click the arrow. F1 is just a shortcut. And let's deselect everything by pressing the escape key. You press escape and that's going to deselect everything. Now hover the mouse over this line right here and once it turns red, press the delete key and that's going to get rid of it. We don't need that anymore. So let's take this page and let's move this out of the way. And let's hold shift and click on this object right here. And with them both selected, we're going to go to extension, modify path, and we're going to select perspective. And what you should end up with is something like this. It's going to take that page and it's going to make it look like it's laying at an angle. And we can take this now. We can take this and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We don't really need that anymore. And then we can take this. Let's take this and let's right click this and go to duplicate. And let's flip this horizontally and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that first one that we duplicated and with them both selected come over here to where it says 
align left edges of objects to the right edge of the anchor. And let's click that once. And that should combine the two of those together. And then we can go to path union, kind of like that. What we can do next is what we're going to do is we're going to right click this and go to duplicate. And let's turn that red. Oops, I clicked the wrong shade of red. Red, kind of like that. And then we're going to go to path, break apart, and that's going to fill it in and make it a solid object. And then we're going to go to path, union. And what we could do now is we could take this copy and click and drag this down to here while holding control. Hold your control key on the keyboard before you do that. So hold control and click and drag this down to about here. Kind of like that. And what we could do next is we're going to go to our magnifying glass. And we're going to click and drag over the bottom left side of our graphic right here. And then we'll go to the Bezier pen. Let's click on that. And let's come up here to this little green icon that says Snap to Cusp Nodes. We're going to turn that on. And then we're going to snap the cursor onto this corner. Click once. Then snap the cursor onto this corner. Click again. And let's go over to the other side. I'm just going to... I'm actually going to press the, the subtract key on the keyboard to zoom out. And then we're going to snap this onto that corner. And then we're going to snap this onto that corner. And then we can come up here and turn that off. We don't need that anymore. And then just come along the inside and continue this this uh, shape along the inside of the red graphic. Do not make, do not let the line go outside of the red graphic. Just bring it back to the starting point over here like that, and click it onto the starting point to snap it all together. And then we could uh, go to the arrow over here, and while holding Shift in the keyboard, click on the red graphic so you have them both selected, and we'll go to Path Union. And what we can do now is we can click this black graphic up here, the black book. We can right click that and go to duplicate. And we can go to path, break apart, path, union. And then while holding shift in the keyboard, click on our red graphic below it so you have them both selected. And we'll go to path, difference. And what we can do now is we can click and drag over the entire thing so you have them both selected. And we can go to path, union. You can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And we can come over here and turn the opacity all the way up. And you can make this whichever color you'd like. And as you can see, we're now finished. We have created a, a, a very simple vector style book icon using Inkscape version 91. So if you have any questions, just let me know. And thank you for watching.